more examples of having hope. Um, my, my dad, when I was little, he would always, you know, tell me that, you know, we're going on a trip this weekend, or maybe, you know, uh, I'll go get you that toy that you said you wanted, but there was one specific hope that I had, and I, I was always wishing and wishing and wishing for this tree house. I've always wanted a tree house in a tire swing. It was my whole heart's desire when I was a little kid. And um, he kept saying, okay, you know, I'll, I'll get to, you know, I'll work on it this weekend, or, you know, uh, it has to be, you know, next month because of blah, 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 and he would just give reasons and reasons. So me being all naive, I would, I, I would be okay, you know, that, that's fine, you know, just, you know, take your time or whatever. I understand that, you know, things can happen when I want them to, so, um, how old was I? I was, I was 13. And then he finally started on the test. I've been asking since I was like four. And like 10 years later, well, nine years later, he finally starts on this tree house. And I got really excited and I was really happy. But 
soon enough, I was sent away to go to uh, school in Maryland. So while he was still working on it, it took him a few years, um, my niece was born, <coughs> and she got old enough to where she could understand, you know, a tree house is fun, or a slide, or a tire swing, you know, go outside and play. Um, I come back home, and she comes with me, she, she goes, Auntie Boo, Auntie Boo, look what Pop Pop made me, look what Pop Pop made me. And she drove me outside and she showed me, she's like, look, he made me a tree house. And I was like, man, man, you know, that was actually my tree house. That happened because of me. That was my hope, that was my dream. But um, I'm glad that, you know, she, she actually has that uh, when she goes over and spends the night or whatever she can play. Um, but yeah, the point of all that is that sometimes we are given false hope. In my mind, there's a very, very, very fine line between false hope and encouragement. Because sometimes we encourage people to do things like, hey, you know, I know you're smart, you can do better, you're going to have better grades this year. And that's not false hope, because there is a chance, because hope is knowing that there is a chance. Mm -hmm. So you're not lying to them, and you're not encouraging them in a bad way. But at the same time, you know, some people are realists here, Mr. B. And whenever someone has a dream, you know, I'm gonna be an all-star basketball player, or I'm gonna be like in FIFA World Cup because I'm so good in soccer. And then and um someone comes along and they're like, you know, actually the chances of that happening is really slim and you should just give up on that dream because you're not gonna make it. But that's hope. That's hope because there's always a doubt. But then there's always a chance. So it goes both ways. Um, but yeah, also, Alyssa uh, was saying that the definition of hope is not what it's supposed to be. It's not what the actual definition is. We've warped it, we've watered it down, as she said, and we just associate it with, you know, kind of having a wish or kind of having a dream. Um, <laughs> Could I get Sty? Where's Sty? Hey. Yeah, Sty, come, come up here. And uh, you gotta be out here and run this. <laughs> Angel board. Angel, and I got there you go. Okay, there you are. And Emily Shabbat, please. Come. I'm sorry, I have a little sexy stuff. I'm thinking about that. All right, so um, could you guys like uh, okay, stand up here? This is a little bit more over here. So you stand behind in the short line, and Gabrielle, can you please? Uh, could you be over here? Like yeah, but um, behind, like you closer into the stage. And you, you just stay here, turn to the audience. And Gabby, could you give us a side? What we're gonna do is a trust fall. These two people are obviously <laughs> bigger than the two people behind them. <laughs> And, I mean, they're, they, they're hoping, right? They're hoping that they're going to be caught. By the way, you better catch them, or no one's going to trust you for the rest of the year. Um, so, yeah, we're going we're gonna to try this. Are, are you nervous? Are you nervous? Go ahead, go ahead, pick it up. Do, do you have some hope? Do you guys have hope? I mean, there's doubt. They might not catch you, right? But then again, they might. So there's a chance. All right, we're going to start here. And uh, you want me to count? Or do you just want to call? Do you want to do it at the same time or no? Oh, that's good. Well, All right. Okay. So I'll count. One, two, three. things are not in our hands. 
And there's only one person who can determine how um, our, our destiny and our hope. Um, and, uh, but yeah, some, some, some things we have control over, some things we don't. Uh, hope, again, the resolutions and everything. Actually, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I wasn't gonna say this, but I'm gonna say this because unfortunately, it's something that our generation has accommodated ourselves with. Sometimes situations happen and I don't know, you just hope the condom doesn't break. You hope that she doesn't get pregnant because what? you know that there's a chance. I know, I know we're throwing up. But it's it's real, it's something that's happening in our age group. I don't think that it should be, but it is. Um, and it's just, it's hope, you know, there's a chance. There's doubt, but it's all, nah, she's not gonna get pregnant. Or there's a chance. I don't know, this is risky, she might get pregnant. Um, another thing, I'm gonna be real again. A lot of you sitting in here hope that you'll make it to heaven. You're not 100% sure. You understand that there's a chance that you might not because you're not sure. You're not sure about it. But then there is a chance that you will make it to heaven, but you can't really draw the line if you will or if you won't. And the um, only, only way we can really, I guess, affirm that is if we study our Bibles every day and pray, like this week of prayer. Um, or beyond that, actually, because we should pray all the time. We should always study the Bible. But, yeah, that's, that's my last point for this sermon, and then I'll continue it this evening. So, um, thank you guys for listening, participating, being attentive, and, uh, wait, let's pray, let's pray. Please, my hands. Dear God, I thank you. Because of you, I've done it. I've, um, nailed the first sermon, and I... You know, I felt easy. I was, I was comforted, and I thank you for that. Thank you for giving me that comfort, Lord. And I pray that what I have said, um, what have you, what you have um, pressed upon my heart to say, I, I pray, rather, I hope, I pray that it sticks with these students, these peers of mine, and that they will be able to use this later on in life, <coughs> or later on in this day, and then for the rest of their life. And I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And I pray that this evening um, you'll use me again and uh, for the same result. I pray that we all have a great day and that we um, allow you to use us and help us to always be first, Lord. In your name, I pray these things.